Hey everybody, Deverilli here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Code Realize, Guardian of Rebirth. We are following along with Helsing here, and we just had a pretty nasty battle with Nointe, uh, Dracula's mentor. Van Helsing got messed up pretty bad in the battle, but he is recovering nicely, and we've been having a little heart-to-heart. -heart. So, just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. He looks into the distance. It bothers me to see him look so forlorn, and I ask him a single question. Van Helsing, is it... do you want to die? He doesn't reply. He walks alone, atop the massive walls that surround London. He takes his time, as if merely strolling. The night of London, this city my father created, only shows its true beauty in the darkness. Oh, how beautiful it is. Chaos and fear are about to spread across this city. Interesting, interesting indeed. Mine. I'll play along with this game you're hosting for just a little while longer. I want to see what lies beyond it, too. The truth lies hidden beyond the chaotic screams and seas of blood. <laughs> the wind blows gently, and he runs a hand through his hair. The moon is the only thing that sees his gentle smile, a smile filled with both beauty and madness. Chapter 11, Dollface A few days have passed since the Azoth incident involving Nointe. Van Helsing is nowhere to be seen at our afternoon tea-time setting. Lately, Van Helsing has been away from the mansion, and we have not been seeing much of him. That Van Helsing! What's he up to day after day? I wish he'd be a little more considerate of the chef cooking for him. Yeah, his wounds haven't completely healed either. They weren't critical, but he did suffer serious injury. He should be confined to bed, resting. I wonder where he's been going. Deli, on the other hand, doesn't seem to pay any mind to the conversation, and continues to eat in silence. As far as I can surmise, it's likely that he is hunting for Finnis with Alistair, the new leader of Twilight. I mean, I still can't believe that Finnis is alive. People don't just come back from the dead. That's not how the world works, you know. There must be some sort of trick to it. I can't imagine what it is at this point. Either way, we'll need to make our next move. Azoth-related incidents are becoming more and more frequent. This is my fault, isn't it? It's not your fault at all! This Azoth is enjoying his crimes! He would be up to no good whether he captured you or not! Yes, I agree with Impy. Besides, Shones was saying something similar. Ah, thank you. I feel a little bit better knowing that. Whatever the case, we can't allow Azoth to go around doing as he pleases. St. Germain lays a piece of paper out on the table for us to look at. The page covers the details of the recent violent crimes, as well as changes taking place in London as a response. So far, no connection has been made between the different criminals committing the growing number of atrocious acts. The only thing the crimes have in common is the word Azoth left behind in blood. Even when one of the perpetrators is caught, he commits suicide, leaving behind no clues as to who or where Azoth is. To deal with the situation, Queen Victoria has used her authority to call for full cooperation of the police and the military. She's established a task force for the Azoth cases, with Imperial Guard Captain Leonhardt in charge. 
Leonhardt stresses strengthening the city's defenses first and foremost to prevent further crimes before focusing on Azov. The residents of London have stopped going out at night out of fear that they will be the next victims of these murders. As far as I can tell from the article, the government forces led by Leonhardt are putting a great effort into solving the case. However, Azoth crimes are on the rise at an alarming rate. We know that we have to do something to stop them, but we're unable to make a move. I wonder where Van Helsing went. Oh, speak of the devil! Here is the man himself! I look up in response to Lupin's comment and see Van Helsing. Van Helsing, where have you been? Are you sure you're well enough to keep going out? You're being melodramatic. I'm obviously well enough if I'm able to go out and about. Yeah, yeah but you should still at least tell us where you're going, or that you'll be gone for a while. I wonder if Van Helsing is, is a member of one of those enhanced human experiments too, but he was somehow a successful one instead of one of the failed experiments. Maybe the only one that was that an actual success. Why must I waste my time telling you my each and every move? I suggest you watch your tone. Hey, cut it out! We're happy that you're fine, Van Helsing. Lupin was really worried about you. Huh. Van Helsing! Were you able to get any information on who this Azoth person is? Delhi, who had been silent this whole time, suddenly raises his head. I'm going to stop Azoth to avenge Noite's death. Tell me everything you know. Silence. Van Helsing doesn't reply right away. When he does, he glares at us all around him. No. I came here today to tell you all specifically to back off and to not get yourselves further involved in this case. No. What? I'm telling you that I will handle Azoth. What do you mean, Van Helsing? Oh, I can explain. We all turn and stare wide-eyed at the person who appears from behind Van Helsing. Alistair. Alistair? You mean THE Alistair? The new leader of Twilight? What's he doing here? Van Helsing, why would you... Oh, I apologize for surprising you this way. There is no need for alarm. I have no hostile intentions at this moment. Alistair shrugs and raises his hands as if in surrender. Oh, he looks pretty angry and menacing right there. However, none of us let our guards down, and I feel a sense of fierce hostility from all of us. I see. If you're not our enemy, then... What does the leader of Twilight want with us? If you make any strange moves, I won't hesitate to dispose of you. I trust you're fully aware of that. Alistair nods slowly, seemingly unfazed by St. Germain's threat. Sure. If you don't like what you hear, I don't care what you do with me. Hopefully, I'll be able to explain everything first. It seems Van Helsing bought him here, so we probably won't try anything funny. I exchange a quick glance with Lupin. Okay. Fine, then. Let's hear what you have to say to us. Alistair slowly opens his mouth to speak. The situation has taken a turn. This is no longer just a series of violent crimes. Almost three-fourths of Twilight's members have disappeared from the organization's headquarters. They disappeared? What does that mean? Exactly what I said. All of a sudden, the members of Twilight disappeared one day, like fog. And how did this happen? I don't know, but aside from myself, I can think of only one other individual who can call Twilight to action. You're saying it's Finnis? Exactly right, Cardia. Finnis definitely died. I heard it from my Twilight subordinates as well as from Van Helsing here. However, 
Even that may have been part of his strategy. Are you saying that Finnis has a plan that would be set in motion in the event of his death? Exactly. That, or... Or Finnis is still alive and giving orders. Hmm. As a man of science, I really find it hard to believe that a dead person could come back to life. That's usually what happens with vampires. I guess not in this story. As do I, but the way things are currently, wouldn't you think it best to act on the notion that Finnis might be behind it all? No, Azoth is Azoth. It's dangerous to jump to conclusions before we've seen with our own eyes that Finnis is alive. You must be the infamous Arsene Lupin, the first thief ever to try fall with Twilight. May I ask where you acquired your skills? I couldn't help but notice the similarity between your technique and Twilight's. And those who seek efficiency all end up taking the same path. Isn't that the way with everything? Hmm. I suppose there's some truth to that. Whatever the case, if Finnis decides to use Twilight to do something in the future, certain danger awaits us. You all shouldn't get involved. Go find some other route to get information regarding Isaac Beckford. Just let me handle this case on my own. We can't let you do that. I can't stop myself from speaking out. I hadn't put much thought into it. The words tumbled out simply because I don't want to be separated from Van Helsing. As soon as I look the other way, he's going to go someplace far away. I'm certain of this. If Azoth is truly Finnis, I cannot ignore this case while searching for clues about my father. Besides, they're after me, and I can't just leave it all up to you. I suppose I didn't get my point across. Let me clarify. I am saying that all of you are holding me back. Still, I can't let you go by yourself. Uh, huh. This doesn't seem like a conversation for the likes of an outsider like me. I'll let you know if I find something, Abraham. I'll come along with you. Any further discussion is a waste of time. Alistair leaves the room, and Van Helsing follows him out. I chase Van Helsing outside. The two men are standing right outside the mansion's main entrance. Van Helsing, wait. Shall I give you two a moment? No need, let's go. <laughs> you can at least hear her out, no? She's so concerned about you. Huh, it's none of her business. Oh, be that way. Those who think of you fondly. That's rather rare in your case, isn't it? He gently taps Van Helsing on the shoulder and walks away. Van Helsing remains in the same place. Van Helsing, you're quite persistent. I'm coming with you. I won't get in your way. Van Helsing looks me in the face then lets out a slight sigh. This isn't something you can get through with pure determination. And what does any of it have to do with you? Duh, Finnis is my brother. If Finnis knows a cure for your poison, I swear to you I'll get that information out of him. So, just leave me be. That's not it. I don't know how to express what I'm feeling right now. I don't want to see you suffer anymore. You think I'm suffering? What makes you say that? It just looks like you're deeply hurt, and it looks like you're trying to get yourself killed. I feel like I can't leave you by yourself. I see. Your concerns are completely off the mark. And even if I were suffering, it's none of your concern. But... Stop. Just think about yourself. Get rid of that poison and go on to live a happy life as a normal person. If there's anything I wish for you, that's it. But I... I feel...
feel? What do I feel? I don't quite understand what I want to say. What exactly is Van Helsing to me? Then I hear the cry of a horse. I look in the direction of the sound, wondering what it could be. Van Helsing! Cordia! With a desperate look, Leonhart rides his steed through the mansion gates. He dismounts from his horse and advances towards Van Helsing. Something terrible has happened. I need to tell you all. Gather the rest of your group because I need your help. Is it Azoth? I can handle it alone. We're all in the dining room. Please come in. Thank you, miss. I'll go right on in. Cardia, you... We've gotten through everything together. That's why we'll always be together. Do as you want. Van Helsing and I rush back to the mansion. Several soldiers broke into the palace while the queen was holding court. Those soldiers shouted nonsense, then went on a rampage, demonstrating superhuman strength. Superhuman strength? That must mean... Hidden strength. Hidden strength? What do you mean? I'll explain later. Keep talking. You're in a hurry, aren't you? Y yes! Three civilians lost their lives before the Royal Guard could apprehend these intruders. One of the captured men set off an explosive that he had been carrying, killing himself and his accomplices. Thankfully, no harm came to the Queen, but five Royal Guards met honorable deaths from the incidents alone. He, he blew himself up. That's pretty intense. That's quite an extreme method. And did you find the word Azoth? Indeed, we did. It was etched into a metal box the man was holding. Azoth, again. But that's not the only problem. A strange letter was in the box, appearing to be a declaration of war against Britain. Leonhardt takes a piece of paper out of a pocket and shows it to us. I desire destruction and chaos. I desire the destruction of all order. You shall all become corpses, symbols to demonstrate my will. None shall be spared. Death awaits you all. The truth does not lie within law and order. Now it's time to play a game. That's what it says. So we're up against Jigsaw. Um, so, then Azoth's goal is to overthrow the government? No, his writing makes no political reference whatsoever. Maybe he considers everything as a game? If that's the case, then for fun crimes are getting pretty out of hand. A game? What a joke. Hold on, it's not over yet. There's one more important fact I need to tell you. Right before the men blew themselves up, they shouted, Long live Master Finnis! Although we'd like to question him, Finnis has disappeared, we really don't know what to think. The unsurety in Leonhardt's voice makes us look around at one another. This just raises the possibility that he is Azoth. Based on these circumstances, that really might be the case. Immortality, I see. W what what on earth are you talking about? Finnis has already died twice that we know of. If he really is alive right now... He's on his third round of life, at least. It's alright, Captain Leonhard. I'll explain. When no one raises any complaints, I tell Leonhard the events that led up till now. Of course, I don't tell him too much about some topics that would be inconvenient. He looks at me suspiciously the entire time, and scoffs disdainfully occasionally, but when I finish talking, he nods. Hmm, so Finnis is Azoth. Wouldn't it be reasonable to assume that both times you encountered him were actually doubles? I don't think that's possible, but I can't deny that it is the most logical explanation. 
I understand. I'll have some personnel tasked to search for Finnis. I'd like all of you to put your efforts toward finding Azos. To find the Mastermind, we'll probably need to pay a visit to Sholm's first. Then, I'll go with old Leonhardt here to check out the scene of the fracas. I may be able to find some clues. Then, shall we split into separate teams as we did before? Victor, Impy, and I will go with Lupin. Van Helsing, Deli, and Miss Cardia. You lot can go speak with Sholmes. If we're simply searching for him, the more help the better, right, Van Helsing? Hmm. Do as you please. And it pleases me to do this. Van Helsing leaves the room, and Deli and I follow him. As the sun is about to set in the skies to the west, we arrive once again at Sholm's detective office. The door opens before we can knock. Oh, isn't this a pleasant surprise? Did you need something for me? We're here to ask if you've made any progress in the Azoth case. Ah, that! You've come at just the right time, then. There's about to be some progress now. About to be progress? Would you care to explain that? Ho-hum. Time's a-wasting. Let's a walk and talk. I really should have realized this much sooner. Sholmes begins walking away at a brisk pace. You said the other day that Azoth was in reality an alias used by Finnis. I decided to look through the Azoth crimes, as well as other similar violent incidents from the past, through that perspective. I found out that a number of Finnis's political rivals were involved in these cases, too many to be ignored statistically. So, Finnis is behind them after all. Perhaps, or perhaps there is another person who wants us to believe that. Where are we going? The thing is, Finnis's greatest political foe remains alive and untouched. The central figure opposing Finnis is the House of Lords, who argued against Isaac's ideas, and even objected to the Vampire War. Marcus Renfield. Sholmes nods at Van Helsing's outburst. That didn't sound like an outburst to me. Do you know him, Van Helsing? He's a famous man. It's said that not even Queen Victoria can ignore this man's words without consideration. I've already heard about the declaration of war delivered to Buckingham Palace. It would seem as if Azoth is enjoying these events, as if he's watching a play unfold on stage. If he aims to push the entirety of the government into complete chaos, there's no better time for it than after that attack. Th then... Marky Renfield is... He may be in a predicament of his own, even as we speak. I see. So, there were humans who were actually against the Vampire War. I hope he is safe. Like Sholm said, we'd best hurry. We follow Sholm's lead and rush to central London. Here's his mansion. I pull myself together. <gasps> Suddenly, we hear a scream from within the mansion. This isn't good. We may be too late. Oh, we're up there! There's the sound of glass shattering, and a figure leaps down from the third floor to the ground. Upon landing, the person starts running without missing a beat. Incredible! He wasn't hurt at all by that fall from that height. Either way, I'll investigate. You all chase that man. No need to tell me. I have no intention of letting him go. Van Helsing begins running, and we chase after him. We're closing in on Azoth's true identity by the minute. I feel certain of this. But at the same time, it feels like Van Helsing is running straight into a trap that can't be undone, and this scares me. 
the sun sets completely as I follow his footsteps, and we return once more to Midtown. I can't find any traces left behind by the person who fled the mansion, but Van Helsing picks up on the faintest tracks. He's maintaining a constant speed. It's almost as if he wants us to chase him. So, this is a trap. So it would seem. I suddenly feel my hackles rise. Two Twilight soldiers with swords appear. <laughs> Dear LaCroix, looks like you were right. There are only two of them, no matter how well trained they are. No human is a match for me. A sharp blade slices towards Delhi, and he barely twists aside to avoid it. Annoying pawns. Van Helsing fires his gun without hesitation, but amazingly the soldiers avoid his shots. I see. They're hidden strength. No, they're not. Those weren't the movements of human physiques. They're my people. Vampires. Vampires. Then they're the same as Noite. Grrr. I hear a growl. There doesn't appear to be a single spark of sanity left in them. You two. I'll go after Azoth on my own. You both should try to join up with Lupin's group. Wait, we should all retreat together. This is Azoth's trap for us. Probably, so what? If this is his trap, I'll rip Azoth's throat out, trap and all. Van Helsing aims his gun at one of the soldiers, his eyes filled with rage. However, an unexpected voice calls out. There's no need for that, Abraham Van Helsing. The one you seek is right here. A small figure appears between the soldiers. A light breeze blows by, and the clouds reveal enough of the moon to illuminate the scene. Th Dennis. The name tumbles from my mouth. Hello, sister. We meet again. Dramatic reunions are always wonderful, no matter how many times you experience them. Immortal. The possibility had come up many times, but when faced with the actuality of it, the eeriness and discomfort are more than I can bear. The doll-like face, almost perfectly still and flawless in the moonlight. It's exactly the same as the Finnis who had died in the laboratory. There's no way it could have been a double. There is no question. Finnis is Azoth. Van Helsing, you're so persistent. What drives you, hmm? Revenge born from anger? Or fear to keep you going? Whatever the case, you can keep doing what you're doing to your heart's content. I have my own business to attend to. I'm really here to provide some encouragement to all you hard workers. I'll see you later. Finnis laughs as he turns away. I try to call out to him and freeze at the gunshot that goes off from beside me. Venice. <sighs> Van Helsing's shot doesn't reach his target. Instead, one of the Twilight soldiers blocks it, standing before us like a wall. <sighs> Venice looks around with an amused smirk as if noticing the situation for the first time. Oh, what's this? How strange! These vampires protect me so faithfully. Ah, I see. And that's how they're wired. Wired? What are you talking about? Unfortunately, my time for playing with you is up. These blokes will stick around. He waves, then turns his back on us and disappears into the darkness. Venus! The Twilight soldiers move to block Van Helsing as he runs after Finnis. Van Helsing, watch out! A soldier's rapier strikes his arm and a bloodstain blossoms on his shoulder. But he continues running without stopping. 
It's as if he doesn't register anything except for Finnis. Deli runs ahead of the Twilight soldiers, who have turned to pursue Van Helsing, and blocks their way. My brothers, I'll take care of you. I am successor to the throne of Nosferatu, and am prepared to give my life for those of my subjects. In the name of my father, the great King De La Croix, I shall save you. Deli takes an aggressive stance, and the vampires in twilight uniforms seem to shift their focus from Van Helsing to him. Deli, I know Deli is strong, but I've seen firsthand how frightening hidden strength can be, and how strong vampires are under its influence. Cardia, listen closely. Deli speaks calmly, as if coaxing me through my internal struggle. I'll take over here. You can't leave that man alone. He is in the same state I was before. He's so caught up in revenge that he's about to lose himself in the darkness. No matter what happens to him, you must be his light and guide him. Just like you were the single ray of light for me. Me, your light. He barely dodges the blades that attack him from both sides, and grabs the vampire's arms, stopping them. What are you waiting for? Van Helsing needs you! Okay, there's a bad ending here, so I want to go ahead and show you guys the bad ending before we go do the real one. I mean, the good one. So I remain here. No, I'm staying here with you. What? If I leave you and something happens to you, I'll always regret it. Van Helsing taught me how to fight. I can at least help you. Huh! If that's what you want! <laughs> Deli roars and throws the two men away from him with his small frame. The soldiers hit a stone wall with a deafening thud, and the wall crumbles with the impact. Uh, amazing! <laughs> Still, the soldiers stand up, as if they don't feel anything. The noble blood of the Vampire Kings runs through my body, and I have continued to train so as not to embarrass my lineage. I polish this power for the purpose of revenge, but I will use it now to save you. Deli aggressively battles the two soldiers, without backing down at all. Maybe he can actually win. What? I feel something hot in my chest, and look down to see what the matter is. A silver blade protrudes from my chest. It looks so natural, and yet so grotesque. I've been stabbed. By what? By whom? I stare at the sight of my own blood spurting out. <coughs> Deli yells something, but I can't make out what. He seems so painfully far away. I catch a glimpse of a face as I crumble to the ground. You... why would you... Before I can finish my question, the blade flashes once more as it lunges for my throat. Oh, and that's pretty ominous because apparently someone that we may trust is not worth worthy of our trust. Hmm... Do not like that implication. Okay, and this time, we'll go after Van Helsing. Oh, actually, right here, we're gonna have to take a break because uh, we are all out of time. So, we will follow Van Helsing in the next episode. I hope to see you in my future videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.